You're with Julian on the Brown Notes and Brexit again is here. Finally, we are Brexiting as we wanted. King Arthur is about to return and make England green again and everyone's going to be buying local food from the local farmer and he'll be sending his rosy cheek mavens out to the crossroads to hand you freshly baked bread. Five years ago, uh, UK, the UK performed perhaps the most suicidal act from any developed nation in modern history and arguably the apex of the Murdoch era, which was to vote for Brexit. They had been hammered by Nigel Farage, his party UKIP and Boris Johnson in the most obscene way possible, a raft of lies that we know were lies and that were just tapping into this inherent and stupid racism from half the country. But the problem was is that they, the people were angry because of the Tories and the Tories had run the country into the ground in one way or another for much of the last 40 years. But ever since David Cameron came into power and, and austerity measures, it had just life had got worse, opportunities had got less. And they should have blamed the Tories and they blamed Europe because a bunch of bumbling Eton toffs told them to. And David Cameron, just to cling on to power, held a referendum that they were sure that they would win. And on the 23rd of June 2016, about 2 or 3% more people voted to leave than stay in the European Union, triggering Brexit. And we all said what would happen. Um, and ironically, the, it kept the Tories in power. It actually stopped the greatest political leader and the greatest platform of any political party in my lifetime, Jeremy Corbyn's socialist democracy platform, it kept him out of office. We should have punished the Tories. And even though David Cameron, the Prime Minister, quit because of it, they're still in power. You keep voting them in, you idiots. Even Boris Johnson, the leader of this debacle, who ascended to the throne in a manner like Trump and ScoMo, uh, perhaps not the most deserving leader or capable leader, and perhaps one of the more narcissistic. Even he in 2013 said that the, the Brit Britain needs to leave the European Union to understand that its problems are its own. He said that, and he led Brexit. Off of Murdoch's continue. It was, it was a stupid game to play, because all the people that wanted Brexit were, I'm going to vote Brexit even if you cut my own legs off. If you set fire to my nan's house, I'm voting Brexit. They were never going to budge. And all it took was a few percent to make the biggest change in UK history in my lifetime. And we since found out that uh, Cambridge Analytica, a firm who were deeply involved in Trump's election through their collection of data points on Facebook and who had to face uh, a Senate inquiry or a House of Commons inquiry in the UK where their nefarious but very clever dealings in manipulating people were laid bare and the fact that they were a defence firm that used to do this in Iraq <laughs> to manipulate uh, war-torn populations so that they wouldn't become extremists. Turn this weapon of war, they described as a weapon of war, on the British public. Um, it's the most damaging thing that any nation has done to itself. I mean, you could say that voting in Donald Trump was damaging or voting in Scott Morrison is damaging, but once they're gone, they're gone. Brexit is forever. Um, and Brexit kicked in on the 31st of January 2020. It became very apparent that everyone had been lied to and that they had no idea what they were doing and nothing they promised was going to come true. But it didn't matter to the Brexit gang. They wanted Brexit. So now, um, in the middle of COVID, admittedly, um, and anyone says this is for, uh, about COVID, what's happening in the UK at the moment. No, it isn't. It's about Brexit. You don't have a shortage of lorry drivers unable to give, deliver goods because you expelled a million foreign workers and say it's not about Brexit. Even these Tories that voted for Brexit are saying, let's bring in lots of Afghanistan refugees. You really had Brexit, so you want to bring in loads of refugees. Hours-long food uh, fuel queues, food shortages, brawls in the streets, and possible school closures. The UK in crisis. 
British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has mobilised the military in response to a growing crisis with long queues at petrol stations and drivers fighting. Thousands of the UK's fuel stations have run dry amid a panic. Uh, national shortage called by panic buying and a lack of drivers, hours long queues. Um, the shelves are empty. If only there was some way these people could have been tipped off that this might happen at some point. If only there was some big event that, where people actually express that this might lead to catastrophe. A man was thrown onto the bonnet as a car moved forward before he circled back to the driver's side and kicked the vehicle, damaging its mirror. The police arrived at the scene to find no trace of either vehicle. The government and the fuel industry insist the crisis will ease in the coming days, but it's going to get worse in the coming years. As um, they don't care. In a way, I'm glad that Jeremy Corbyn didn't win that Brexit election against Boris Johnson. In a similar way, I'm almost glad that Bill Shorten didn't win against ScoMo because sooner or later, the terrible economic state of Australia and the UK is going to come home. And if they were in power, the media would say it was all about their socialist leftist policies. So I would like them to wear it and honestly for it to get as bad as possible, to rub these people's noses in it. This is only, people are saying that it is, it's not Brexit. It's only happening to the UK. Every other country's got COVID. They aren't having what's happening in the UK happen. They've admitted it's a lack of foreign drivers. How did they leave the country? What possible event possibly led to that? Of course it's Brexit. Every other country's got COVID. They haven't got the same situation that's happening in the UK. So... These are the, you know, this is the same gang that have campaigned their whole life, the last 20 years, denying climate change. Have they ever put their hand up and ever said they were wrong about anything? That section of the public. We are feeling the effects of climate change now, but they still claim to be right. And they will never not say that they were right about Brexit. And the people that voted for Brexit... They aren't the ones that are going to be going out there helping UK farmers and buying their goods. They're going to be ch buying the cheap, subsidised American crap in the supermarkets. They'll be first in line for that. So the future of the UK, I kind of want it to be as bad as possible. I know that's an awful thing. And I kind of want that here as well. Because how, how, how else will the public ever wake up to what they're doing? To these appalling Murdoch-led scenarios. The worst of all isn't the appalling leader we have in our country, but Brexit. A, a, an astonishing act of self-destruction for no benefit and the likely breakup of the United Kingdom. Their, <clears throat> their sovereignty is now to fight Scotland's independence. The irony of them trying to stop Scotland getting independence after getting independence from Europe is actually mind-blowing. But as we have now the world's largest trading bloc in the European Union against us, and they have no reason to help the UK thrive or help us out in this instance, because we are the best example to all the other countries that had right-wing populist pro-leaving Europe bodies in their midst, and plenty did uh, when Brexit happened. And we're now the golden example of what not to do. And given the horrible state of the economy after so many neoliberal Tory years and the unbelievably incompetent leadership that they've got and the fact that it's so well supported by the Murdoch press, it's difficult not to imagine that this will be the darkest period in my lifetime in the UK's history. People talk about how awful it was in the 70s and the dustbins didn't get cleared up. At least you could buy a house back then. No one can buy anything anymore. No one's got any money. It might have been um, some very big problems in the 1970s, but your quality of life was a lot better. A working class person could buy a three bedroom home. It's not going to happen nowadays. So this is going to be like the waking dead in the UK. It's going to be like the Armageddon of Brexit. And this is the first turn. And it's been exacerbated by COVID. But it was in the mail. We've only, it's only been since the 20th of Jan last year. And the full ramifications of Brexit haven't kicked in by a long shot. This is like the opening salvo. 
Oh, do you want to turn that off? It's that one. Uh, Casey Musgraves, who I had.